Hello and welcome to Studio Pixel. In this lecture, we're going to learn about the point constraint in Autodix Maya. Now, before starting with the point constraint, I would like to talk a few words about the constraint. Now, what is the meaning of constraint? The actual meaning of the word constraint is uh, that you are forcing someone to do something. That means, in case of Maya, definitely we are forcing some objects to do some of the movements or some of some of the actions that we really want to do or to follow. So, in case of animation, uh, what we like to do do is uh, that we would like to follow one object to the other. So, in this case, in this scene, I have taken three objects. One is a cylinder, and a sphere, and a cone. So, I would like to uh, use the constraint uh, within this three. So, under the animation menu, you'll see there's a menu called constraint. Now, under this constraint menu, you'll see a lot of uh, constraint options. That is, point constraint, aim constraint, orient constraint, scale, Parent geometry, normal tangent, point poly, and plus point, and even the bold vector. So, uh, before uh, going through all the others, uh, in this lecture we are uh, solely concentrated on the point constraint. Now, what is a point constraint? Now, if I select any two object just uh, randomly and hit point constraint, you will see it actually affect one object's position. Immediately you can see the sphere which was my the last selection was moved absolutely to the cone. Now what is actually happened there? What are the options? How can I control? Let's get see. So first of all, I'll go to the option box of the point constraint. And here you can see there's a bunch of uh, options are out there. But before that, uh, first of all, I'd uh, like to uh, tell you that how the constraint actually working. Now. When I'm selecting the first object, that object became the parent. And when I'm selecting the next object or the last object, that particular object became the child, or which is uh, I'm compelling, I'm forcing to follow this particular parent object. Now, in this case, I w I'm not going to, I'm not actually using the regular parent child relationship by hitting the P key and the keyboard, but um, there's a different kind of. Uh, 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 relationship, uh, uh, parental relationship, a uh, dependable uh, relationship, which is actually absolutely concentrating on the positional values of the child object, uh, in which, uh, which uh, in this case is the uh, sphere. So when I'm hitting add, after selecting the last object, which is uh, the sphere, you can see my sphere is actually moving by forcefully on the position of the. Uh, cone and also if you see the channel box of the sphere that is uh, turned into a blue color which means that uh, constraining has been happened and also it has some values so that is a constraint and how can you control that now we can get into the options now um, again I can uh, use the same thing uh, on a, a opposite uh, case like first I select the sphere where I want to make this sphere as a parent so select the sphere then shift select the cone and if i hit add the cone will come to the uh, position of the sphere so in, the, in that case the cone is uh, actually getting the, that uh, particular uh, you know the, the constraint factors and if you go to the uh, shape nodes uh, the input nodes you can see the uh, the p cone point constraint one has been created so that is the constraining node that has been created after i hit the, uh, the add button so that's how we can add the constraint and now i can i can tell you that uh, what are the option box or what are the option boxes that actually comes to it so here if i shift to like this the last one i'm uh, turning on the cone now what is the meaning of the maintain offset now Immediately, you can understand that uh, by a very basic knowledge that maintaining this distance as this uh, point constraint is concentrating only on the translate value, not on the rotation, rotational values or scale and, or any other values. So that's where the uh, constraint comes to uh, play very handy because, oops, because uh, when I'm parenting any object, like say, shift select this and hit P, you can see this 
these two objects are not only moving but also rotating. I don't want that rotation. I, I only want to have a uh, connection between these two while um, my uh, my positional values are concerned. So in that case, I can use the constraint. Even the connectionator also won't play because that connectionator will also you know uh, override by the, uh, the animation keys. So in that case, the uh, constraining values, the constraining, the point, uh, using the point constraint will be very, very handy. That I want to lock that particular uh, movement of that particular object, which is which will be the child object. So in that case, I I will definitely use that uh, constraint. So getting back to the options, uh, the maintaining offset. What is the maintain offset? Means that the initial distance between these two objects will retain will be maintained so here when I'm adding this you can see the object is coming onto the position of the parent object well if I switch on the maintain offset and then hit apply you can see that objects are not coming onto the others but still following the parent object and it's not rotating so so this is the uh, this is the plus point of the maintaining offset where it's absolutely depends on your situation where you want to use this maintain offset on and off but this is a very very important option okay now uh, just uh, hit uh, control Z for get back to the initial position okay now now it's absolutely up to me where I really wanted to uh, switch on the uh, maintain offset on or not because it's absolutely depend on your scene, your uh, required animation and all of that. So the next option is the animation layer. Whether I want to put this kind of constraint that I'm using into a particular animation layer. In this case, I don't have any kind of layer, so you, you don't want to uh, put. But if you want some overriding action in in animation, or you are uh, uh, over the any any kind of cyclic animation you are doing, and uh, all of a sudden you your scene need uh, or maybe uh, that same animation. Will, you will have to re rework on onto it and then in that case you can use the animation layer and you can put the constraining into a particular animation layer and also you can set the override so that you can it can mix up with the uh, constraining values and the uh, and the previous uh, base layer animation now constraining access is really important because uh, in this case uh, you can see uh, just turning off the my mate in opposite getting back to the default values now if I hit apply you can see all the free access has been affected and and what if I really want to control only the x-axis or maybe only x and y not I won't I really don't want to use Z so in that case if you see you can see that uh, the x and y has been uh, you know put into the uh, constraining values but not z if z is absolutely free now you can move the z even if you if you move the object you can see the z value is not affecting by the uh, by the parent object but uh, if you use x and if you uh, move the x value or change the x value and then if you um, change the uh, parent object immediately you can see this that is actually jumping up and uh, taking its own uh, the, you know, position that we have actually compelled it to do. So that is the uh, point constraint is all about. That is uh, uh, the all the options and the weight. Now that that is also a very important one. I'm just uh, getting to saying about that. Uh, how the weight can play a handy role in it just uh, getting back to so now weight value of any kind of constraint and that holds to holds to any other other constraint also like aim or orient or scale or whatever it is so the weight is actually comes to play when you have more than one parent objects controlling the same child object like this uh, cone will be controlled by um, maybe this uh, cylinder and also the uh, sphere so first of all I just both select the cylinder and the sphere 
these are the parent objects then lastly I will going to select the uh, cone now after that if I hit add you can see it's it is actually uh, sharing the values of the two P sphere and P cylinder and you can see it's always maintaining an in between position in between position of of the uh, of the these two objects like uh, it always uh, uh, taking the average value of this and if I don't want that I want a complete uh, uh, even if I, I can animate that I, I want that for initially I want uh, my uh, that this cone will be uh, follow the sphere then I can definitely you know select this cone and uh, make the value of the cylinder weight to zero so that the immediately you can see that uh, my cone has been actually following the sphere not uh, the cylinder and if I switch that like make it zero and oops one and now we can see this is actually moving towards a, a cylinder no, but there is no effect of, of sphere so that is also uh, can be animatable uh, in, in various cases that is uh, absolutely a requirement uh, when you are required to do so you can use this as, as a very good uh, option so you can do it to uh, so few uh, picking up the objects or any other any other stuff that you really want to I, I'm going to show you in, a, in the later chapter where I'm compiling all the constraining options and this is the basics of of this point constraint and I'm going to show you the you know the a more practical way on the later chapters uh, so where, where I can combine all the constraints uh, or two three cons constraints in, in one single uh, scene or one single cases and I'll give you some examples really cool examples where we can use this so hope you understand this constraint and you hope you enjoy this please subscribe to our YouTube videos and also follow us on the like our Facebook page and also the Twitter so thank you very much